Hi everybody, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Larry and this is Dad What's For Dinner. And tonight it is poor man's beef stroganoff. What makes it poor man's beef stroganoff? We're not gonna be using top choice cuts of beef. We're gonna be using just regular 80, 20 ground beef. So it's, you know, it's a simple recipe and you know, hopefully we can get in and out within 30 minutes. Let's go ahead and get after it and we'll get started. You may have noticed that I'm uh, doing a little bit different camera angle. I thought maybe you guys would like to see me actually cooking rather than just my hands in the uh, pans here. So we're going to try a different camera angle, a little bit different camera technique today. But the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, brown, and I did say brown, not cook, a pound of 80-20 ground beef. So as we're browning the meat, we want to go ahead and break it up. Uh, not taco meat fine, but probably like if you were making spaghetti sauce, I'll see if I can tilt this up so the camera can see it, you know, chunky, but not super chunky. So, and really it comes down to a matter of taste and you just got to remember what your end product is. Uh, so you get, get what you want. We also want to go ahead and season to taste your ground beef with salt and pepper. You don't have to have a fancy grinder, but fresh ground black pepper is a lot better than just the ground pepper that you buy in the store. And again, that's just the taste. So those of you that have been watching the channel for a while know the difference between browning your meat and cooking your meat, but just in case, I'm going to go over it one more time. Most recipes that call for browning the meat, that's what they mean. They mean you actually need to brown the meat, not just cook it so the pink is done. You want to get that, for lack of a better word, char on the meat so that you get that nice caramelized flavor in your beef. Um, we're not quite there yet. I mean, I, I've got a little bit of color here and there, but there's still a lot of pink. And the best way to get that color is just let the meat sit in the pan don't disturb it once you've got it all broken up. Just let it sit and, and cook, and then it, it will brown. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right. So I'm not real sure how this is going to pick up on this camera angle. But if I can get it some, some meat on there. So if you can look here, I'll try to bring it in close to the camera. You can see that, that brown meat right there. That's what you're looking for. And once your meat gets to that desired level of doneness, the next thing we're going to do is start building our sauce. Well, not our sauce, but um, the things that go into our sauce. So depending on how lean your meat is, the 80-20 is pretty lean. We're going to go ahead and add some oil back into the pan. And that's just two, uh, not two pounds, two tablespoons of just, uh, canola oil. And to that, we're going to add in one medium onion that's been diced. And then eight ounces of just your regular white mushrooms diced. And we're going to sweat those out. And cook them until the mushrooms give up their water and the onions are translucent. Probably about five minutes. And then you want to salt this to get that start, that process of the vegetables giving up their water get started. Okay, so it's been about five minutes, and we got the mushrooms sweated out, or the onions sweated out, the mushrooms have given up their moisture. So we're going to go ahead and start to build our sauce, and just do that. Oh, well, actually, I lied. <laughs> we're going to put in some garlic. I forgot about the garlic. So we're going to put that in there, and cook it till you smell the garlic. That should take about 30 seconds. Yeah, there it's coming. That's good with that. So the next thing we're going to add is uh, two tablespoons of flour. And that's going to act as a thickening agent. And we're going to cook that down. Not cook it down, but cook it till that raw white flour smell goes away. 
Oh, that just takes a minute or two. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to add into this is one can of cream of mushroom soup, just the soup. And trust the process. I know that the flour thickening is part of the making the sauce. But this is also part of the poor man's thing that most people have cream of something soup in their pantry anyway. And may or may not have heavy cream in their pantry or in their fridge. So that, this is also part of the poor man's thing. Okay, in addition to that, we're going to go ahead and add about a cup of beef broth. Stir that all in. Okay. You get that all stirred in. The next ingredient is kind of optional. It's just up to your taste. But this is a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And it, I think it just gives it a little bit extra. Well, don't do that. Gives it a nice little taste. We'll be back. I got to clean up a mess. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so you want to bring this to a simmer. And you'll let this uh, simmer for about five to seven minutes till it kind of thickens up a little bit. Okay. So that's what we're waiting for that to simmer. I'll talk to you all a little bit about my theory about cooking. Uh, preface this by saying I am not a professional chef, not professionally trained or anything like that. Just 16 years of cooking family dinners. Uh, this is more of a method than a recipe. And most recipes are that way. Once you understand what a specific ingredient does, you can mix, match, change it in and out. You know, once you know the purpose of whatever you're putting in there, then you can change it like, you know, is this to make it more salty? Is it to make it more sweet? Is it to interact with that ingredient? And, you know, most recipes don't require precision. Now, some do, and we'll get into that in another video, but some, most, most recipes, it's more important, technique is more important than the actual recipe, right? That's been my experience. Again, not a professional, it's just my opinion. So anyway, this is starting to simmer, and we'll let that go until it thickens up a little bit and reduces a little bit and probably about five-ish minutes and then we can go ahead and finish off the sauce and get it ready for serving. Okay, so that's been about five minutes and it's reduced pretty well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn the heat off and we're going to add in about a... the recipe calls for a, a half a cup but I'm going to go a little heavier. Uh, just because that's what's less left in the bottle or in the container. And I don't want to leave an eighth of a cup of sour cream in there. So we're just going to go ahead and stir that in. And we're going to finish the sauce off. Again, the recipe calls for, I believe, a tablespoon of Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce, but you kind of do it to your taste. And this pairs really well with both the beef and the mushrooms. So with that, you could probably measure with your heart. And then make sure that all that sour cream is incorporated really well. And that is it. Now you can serve this over uh, egg noodles, you can serve it over rice. I suppose if you were really fancy, you could serve it over polenta, although I've never tried that, but I hear it's pretty good. Um, mashed potatoes, rice, whatever you like. I personally like uh, egg noodles and that's the way we're going to do it. So. Okay, so this has been cooking for about eight minutes and it's where I like it to be. And we're just going to ahead and drain these noodles and get everything plated up. And this will be what's for dinner. Okay, so this is poor man's beef stroganoff. 
I'm Larry. This is Dad. What's for dinner? Y'all take care and God bless and we'll see you next time. Uh, I want to say again, I really appreciate everybody that subscribed. You know, I'm up over 60 some odd subscribers now. So hopefully we'll get to 100 soon and uh, I appreciate everybody's continued patronage and we'll, we'll talk to y'all later.